Um, so I wanted to uh, introduce the, somebody who's going to actually introduce the speakers and the series. Um, this is Professor uh, Kate Comtois, um, who is uh, with the UW Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences with our UW um, School of Medicine. Um, and she's been spearheading this effort to uh, think about interdisciplinary ways to um, bring groups together to think about evidence-based practice and how to introduce those to communities, um, bringing that uh, from a strength-based perspective and thinking about how evidence-based practices can build on the strengths of, of the communities. Um, and she's going to introduce our two speakers and the topic today and also talk just a bit about this interdisciplinary effort um, to try and bring evidence-based practice uh, for children and mental health workers. Um, in the Seattle area. So thanks very much. Thanks so much, Jennifer. So what I just wanted to do is to just give you a little bit of perspective on the, on the kind of larger effort that this is, uh, lecture series is part of. So this lecture series is uh, part of our larger workforce development uh, interdisciplinary project that we're doing with all schools of the uh, university which um, are working with uh, graduate students who will be going out into clinical roles in the community. We're trying to improve the quality of services that people receive in Washington State by improving the workforce starting kind of at home here at the university, making sure that our graduates have experience and understanding of evidence-based practices for children and their families. And we have uh, two initiatives. The first is this lecture series um, that we're calling Referral to Evidence-Based uh, Mental Health, uh, for what, for whom, and how, giving people perspective on different evidence-based practices for different problem areas, knowing how to refer, knowing who to refer to, how do you know if an evidence-based practice is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, we're gonna be doing this monthly. Um, the first one was last month. Uh, Lucy Berliner came and gave a, uh, <coughs> a talk and uh, we're opening this up to everybody from across the university system. Um, our lecture series is listed on our website. I uh, happen to have our website here. So this is the Public Behavioral Health and Justice Policy uh, Division of the Department of Psychiatry and the School of Medicine. It's kind of hosting this initiative on funding from the state legislature to promote evidence-based practice for children and families across the state. Um, so we are, that has created this Evidence-Based Practice Institute and we are a project among projects. Where am I so fast at this before? Projects, and then we are one of the projects here. First development. So we have a larger initiative um, to promote uh, the, the University of Washington graduate level. We're going to eventually get to undergraduate. Um, so uh, this lecture is the last lecture of this school year, and we're going to start again in October um, when everybody's kind of back and around. Um, we have a, a sign-up list going around, and it, uh, you are on the list, and we have your email. We'll make sure you get email so you know um, what the lectures are coming um, in the fall. And for those of you who are graduating, you're welcome to come back. The other thing that we're doing is a provider course series. This is a series for people that apply graduate programs, social work, psychology, psychiatry, nursing, education, um, who are uh, wanting to learn how to actually do evidence-based practices. Um, we have a number of areas of evidence-based practice in which we're teaching courses. Um, and this will be a full year course series. Um, we have, we're at last minute registration right now for the summer course, which is on cognitive behavioral therapy. They'll be focused on teaching uh, trauma-focused CBT, as well as uh, the coping cat, which is an intervention for smaller children. And uh, Elizabeth Feldman is our coordinator for that course. And we're just taking last minute registrations now, so if you know anybody who's interested yourself or anybody else, um, feel free to apply. Uh, it's an interdisciplinary course. You can come from any applied program. Uh, and again, we have on our website, we have uh, uh, back on our main website, there is a events and training page. And you can see all the different trainings that we focus on. Many of them are also focused on uh, evidence-based uh, practice. So you can see this is this speaker series. Um, and here's information about the course and our seminar series for our psychiatry residents. Um, 
And with that, I want to introduce uh, Shin Dorsey and Suzanne Kearns, who are assistant professors in our department and are, have been doing really innovative work on uh, figuring out methods for informing the uh, community about evidence-based practices, particularly uh, in the child welfare system. How do we make sure that people know that evidence-based practices exist? How do we know if you're going to the right evidence-based practice? How do you know how to refer? Making sure that people are well-educated and then also assuring that clinicians in the community are available to provide these evidence-based practices. And so they're gonna give a talk today on matching evidence-based practices to the problem of children and youth um, and talk about some innovative projects that we're doing around the state. Take it away. Can I don't use this? No, the video can't. Oh, the video can't. Okay. All right. Um, Shannon was just reminding me to do a little shout out because today is bike to work day. And so I know many of you guys did do biking. Um, and hopefully I had a chance to stop by and get some free stuff on the trails. Um, did you want to say anything more about it? Shannon? No, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so we're so pleased to be here. I'm Sue and this is Shannon. And we're, um, we kind of call it Shannon and Sue Roadshow sometimes because we do a lot of presentations together about evidence-based practices and trying to help break it down into some small, like more simplified, meaningful ways to communicate about evidence-based practices to practitioners who might not have formal mental health training. And a lot of this came from Project Focus, which was a project that Kate alluded to that was funded by the Paul Allen Foundation. It actually runs through the end of June and we're hoping to extend it. Further, um, but where the focus really was on helping caseworkers in the community who work with kids in foster care understand more about how to think about, conceptualize the mental health issues that, that the kids on their caseload have, and then in a very meaningful and strategic way, link them up with effective practices that are going to be most likely to be able to address the needs and problems that the kids are presenting with. And recognizing that across the range of different needs that kids in foster care have, and kids in general have, there are certain kind of um, fundamental principles that you want to make sure the therapies align with um, to treat certain disorders. So we try to make it a very simple, straightforward presentation. And in so doing, I've gotten a lot of feedback from folks that this tends to be a pretty helpful way to think about children's mental health in general. And so we were invited here today to talk, start telling you a little bit about our approach to see what you guys can take from it and how it might apply to some of the work that you all do as well. So I think we're really happy for you to jump in and ask questions as we go. We have to end at 10 till, so we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of plow through, but definitely stop, um, stop me if you feel like we're going too fast or you have a question about it. Um, so what I'll talk to, talk to you about today is matching mental health um, and behavioral problems to treatments. So as I mentioned, breaking things down to a pretty fundamental level around that. Looking at how do you identify and refer, um, and how do you take data or information assessment findings that you might have for kids and actually interpret that in a way that you can track kids in to appropriate evidence-based services for the needs that the kids present. So even though mental health and behavioral health, emotional well-being for kids is extremely complex and people go to school for years and years to understand it, it's also impressively simple um, to kind of break it down into kind of overview chunks to help kind of begin to organize our thinking around children's mental health issues. And, and even though we recognize that there's a lot of complexity that goes into it, there are people who are trained, you know, who are, who are psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, et cetera, that have advanced knowledge about it, about the needs of mental health. Um, but for folks that are referring, they don't need to know all the intricacies about it, but there are some kind of thumb, uh, general rules that they might want to take 